Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Balling with Art of Lisa. And yes, you have not seen me in a very long time. I hope this finds you all well out there. Um, and I will talk about why I've been kind of MIA and um, all that fun stuff. But you know what? Why don't we get down to my table and have some fun with some detail work? I have a lot of detail work that I'm kind of catching up on on different projects and I thought I'd kind of bring you along for the ride. All right, let's bring you down to the table. All right, let's make sure that we're in screen here. You can see that what I have going on here, and I'm gonna back up just a little bit, is I have um, just the top of the ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous, boy, helps if I say it right, um, little food container here with a piece of um, shop towel on here and this is you know the shop towel that you get Home Depot Ace wherever you're going and also it has the um, water on it to keep it wet boy I'm out of practice and you can see I have various colors here right now so I've been working on glass and uh, bulbs you can see I've been working on some wine glasses here all right, I've been working on some Christmas ornaments and I'm also working on some wooden art ornaments here that I'm just catching up and doing the detail on. Now, because I'm working on multimedia um, or multi-surface here, I'm actually using a uh, folk art paint today. This is multi-surface. So I have titanium white down here. I have... Um, Classic green, this is folk art, and you can see it has for glass, wood, metal on here. Over here I have, this is Juneberry that I have tucked in over there. I have as well, this is, let's see, light lavender right here. I believe that's the one I have. I have a silver as well. And that is platinum. This is all folk art paint that I am working with. Yes, I do have gold down there as well. That's also a folk art paint. I'm kind of working with these colors though. Um, my normal detailing brush, this is my King Art 10 Knot 10 slash zero. It's a 9375 mid-length liner. I like a short liner, so this is what I'm working on. So um, I guess what I can do first is I have some wine glasses that I'm working on and they are going to get some white treatment here. So I do have my titanium white. Typically, um, you know, those who have followed me for a long time know that I do use uh, Joe Sonia paints, but since I am working on different surfaces here, I do use folk art. I'm adding a little bit of water to this just to loosen it up so that it will flow nicely. And uh, let's go ahead and have a little bit of detail paint going on. Well, you can see I've had a little bit of my Juneberry on there. So I'm just going to take it off here. And let's go ahead and add some white. And let's get started here. So did I just throw some color on here? I did. Let's scrape that off. So I apologize that... For those who have followed me for a long time, you know that I typically do a lot more videos than what I've done in 2023, but my creative um, mojo has definitely had a bit of an issue this year. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this detail color around here. And some people like to say, and I'll get back to my little bit of a story here. Some people like to say when you're detailing, you're outlining. I typically don't like to say I'm outlining. I like to say that I am embellishing because I don't always outline around everything. So when I'm doing detailing, and you can see I'm using my pinky here as a brace so that I can hold my brush at pretty much 90 degrees to my glass here. 
and I am just pushing down on the bristles with pressure to flatten them out or to make a thicker line and then taking pressure off to make a thinner line with this. Now I will do this on wood as well after just to demonstrate but with rose modeling and with a lot of other art forms it's all about the pressure that you apply to the brush. Push down, then take the pressure off and go back to the point. So I started to say that a little bit of my creativity has been sucked dry this year. I am actually in the midst of a pretty bizarre and wacky copyright infringement issue where I have found my work to be in a spot that it should not be and it was shared in an instance that it should have been in the safest place. I can't really go into details because um, it's quite possible that it will be going to court so I'll leave that for later and, you know, down the road, I might become an expert on copyright infringement issues, Vera, Burn, all this different stuff. But, you know, we'll save that story for another day. But all I'm going to say is when you're dealing with something like this, it does tend to take some of the wind out of your sails especially with many 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 hours of research of this and you know I'm still a mom I'm still a wife I'm still a dog mom I'm still a daughter I have a lot of other stuff going on so sadly the art form that I love to do and share has taken a bit of a back seat. But you know what? Today, as I was sitting detailing and working on other pieces, I said, maybe it's time to do a video again. But what do you think? All right, I like my detailing on this. This is fun. So this is a stemless wine glass. I do a lot of these. Now these are done again with paint that is meant for glass. And when I paint on glasses, these will go into the oven to bake. So I typically put them in the oven for 30 minutes at 300 degrees. And then I turn the oven off and I let the oven cool down on its own. I actually have quite a few glasses upstairs right now doing that exact process. And you can see, again, notice I'm not really outlining. I'm embellishing. Sometimes I change this whole shape of a stroke with my detailing. You know, I love to detail. Detail is fun. And please, if you try to detail at home and this doesn't go as fast as mine, please remember I have had a lot of hours with a brush in my hand. Probably about 20,000 hours in my lifetime with a brush. But isn't this fun? It's very soothing, I think, to watch this ebb and flow of the brush. So once I have baked these glasses... I do put a coat of acrylic varnish on the strokes themselves and then I bake them for a second time. Acrylic paint tends to not be as shiny as oil paint and rosemary traditionally is an oil paint art form. So by adding the varnish it goes does add a bit of shimmer or shine to it and that's always a nice thing to do and then I bake them again 
And I'm just adding a little zhuzh, you know, a little extra detail here and there, right? Just to bring it all together, kind of fun. So this was done in aqua and gold. So here's that gold. I don't have aqua on here because this was painted prior. Um, I like to say I have some UFOs, unfinished objects that I'm working on. All right, so this works pretty well. And you always make sure, sign your piece. Typically on these smaller pieces, I'll just put my first name, Lisa with an E. So if you see the spelling, it is Lisa. It's just spelled the Norwegian way. So this guy's kind of squared away, right? Let's put him off to the side right now. I do have these nice champagne glasses that I'm working on. That's all those lovely uh, Juneberry, lavender, green, silver colors here. I'll just go to the side a little bit. You can kind of see the names here. I do a lot of heirloom keepsake pieces for weddings. I'll do wedding plates. I'll do glasses. You know, a lot of what I do is about creating heirlooms. These are pieces that hopefully will be a keepsake for the couple or keepsake for the family, however it might be. And we just kind of work our way around. So you can see I'll base a lot of my pieces and then come back and detail them. You know, I'll put the wedding date. I have the names of the couple here, but I'll do the wedding day down at the base of the glass here. So I'm just adding my details, getting this in there. I'll probably only do a small portion of this one. I'll come back. This is fun colors. A lot of times I'll, um, when I'm doing glasses for, um, a wedding then I'll go based upon what the invitation or the colors of the wedding the colors of the bride so you can kind of see what the colors are for this wedding so that's a fun thing to do and because I had these colors out I went ahead and took a white Christmas bowl here. Now this is not a glass one. This one is, well, no, I lied. This is glass, but it is a white shimmer one here. And I decided a lot of times I'll try when I have these different colors, then I'll experiment on an ornament here. And you can see that I did the Juneberry, the lavender, the silver, and the two greens here. Uh, I believe the lighter green is called uh, Fresh Cut Grass. Also, Folk Art Multi-Surface. You know, I will try to remember to list all of the colors that I use down in the description. But you can see you know, I switched now to that Juneberry color. And I'm working on detailing my ornament here. And sometimes it's fun to experiment with different colors. For example, here I just have a silver ornament done in white, white and silver, and then I detailed in white. I think that's kind of an elegant look there. Okay. So again, experimenting with colors. You know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I have thrown ornaments away or tried to clean them up because I didn't like the experiment of colors. I don't know. This could be fun. We'll see how this one comes out, but kind of fun to play with the brush and play with colors here. Get some little dots in there. All right. Maybe with the, the green leaves, I'll actually use darker green here. I don't know if it would look right using this uh, pinkish purple Juneberry color here, but you never know. Oh, I had some little tendrils coming out. That's fun. You never know. Somebody might 
say, well, that is a fun ornament to have. I'll experiment with these different colors and different shapes. The, the glass, the uh, stemless glass that will, that will go on my Etsy shop. I'll put some of these on my Etsy shop as well if I like them. Let's see, wipe out my brush. Let me go to maybe that darker green here. Well, that's fun. What do you think? It's a very um, spring-like, joyful ornament. Maybe not Christmassy. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's just fun to experiment. All right. So that, that's kind of an idea with this. I think that's part of the joy of it's just paint. You need to just experiment. Don't worry if you're watching me at home and you paint along with me or you you're inspired to paint after watching me don't get so hung up on, on making it perfect don't worry if you have to come back and wipe it away or perhaps redo it or something like that it's really you know i say it i've said it in a lot of my old videos you go back to that it's just paint we're not doing rocket science. We're not doing anything crazy. But, you know, it's just paint is something joyful to the heart. It's something joyful that um, all of us need. All of us need to find things that give us pleasure, that give us joy, that make our heart happy. You know, too many things in life are hard. This isn't hard. This is just joyful. And hopefully watching my brush move, and I, I, and I do understand. A lot of times if you try to do this, my, your brush may not move like Lisa's brush moves. But I hope watching how I make the brush move brings you some joy and pleasure as you watch it go. All right, well, that's kind of fun. I like that one. I think I'll, I'll play with that. All right, just because I showed with bulb and I showed with glass here, let's just go to a little bit of wood. And I do have an ornament sitting here. This is just a nice um, flat bowl. And this is, oh, what, how big is this? This is uh, about four inches across. Okay. And I believe I got this from De Palma Woodworking. So I'll try to remember to put that in the uh, description below as well. So let's go ahead. So now I've gone ahead and shown on different items here. Let's go ahead and detail. Oops, a little bit of water on there. Came down as a little blob because I cleaned off my brush in the water, but then I didn't wipe the handle there and the water just dripped down. So now let's go ahead and detail this guy here. Again, I'm not too worried about following the lines here. I'm gonna use my basic stroke work, which is done in gold and white, and use that as a guideline. But I don't have to make it so I have to follow it exactly. Um, the style of rose modeling that I've done on all of this, these pieces is the asymmetrical style called Telemark from the Telemark region in Norway. It is a very asymmetrical, free flowing style and you can see your C strokes here and your S strokes. So it still has all the basic strokes that you would see in classic rose modeling. Um, I find that Telemark is one of the easiest ones to do for myself to do freehand, putting these C's and S's together. Oh, that had a little bit of water on there. So I'll take my paper towel here. Notice I have these small squares of paper towel handy. I always keep a stack of these handy so that if I need to wipe anything up, I need to pull anything away, I can go ahead and work on that. 
and it's not a big piece of paper towel that can go ahead and drag a whole bunch of paint in there. There's some nice cross hatching. Okay, and again, please remember, there's many, 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 many hours that go behind um, these brush strokes here. So this didn't just happen yesterday. I've probably, oh, I don't even know how many thousands of pieces I've painted. I can't even, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even guess anymore how many pieces I've painted all over all these years, you know, and uh, <laughs> hence copyright issues. So make sure if you're painting stuff, put your name on it, which I do. And, uh, but when photos are taken and your name is excluded, you know, and there it does create an issue. Not that I'm complaining or anything. I really, I actually have quite the sense of humor about this whole thing. All right, let's keep getting this in there. So uh, I do try to put my name on everything I paint. You know, all right, let's get some of these colors in here. Now, again, I can detail very quickly. I can also detail very slowly. When I teach classes, and I do do a lot of teaching of rose balling, you can find that at rosemallingclasses.com. I'm going to have some new classes up there shortly. And I do teach for Vesterheim, the Norwegian American Museum, and I teach for various groups. But I'm not the only one who teaches rose modeling. There are wonderful teachers out there that, again, that you can find for Zoom classes or in person. And a lot of them are on rosemallingclasses.com. So R-O-S-E-M-A-L-I-N-G. C L A S S E S dot com, and you can find information there to learn about rose molly. A lot of great things. Again, I will have some new classes up. I do a lot of beginner classes, I find real joy in that. And then I'm working on some nice, more advanced classes here. So let's see. So that's a nice center flower style here and I'm just going to go around and give a little bit of a border here just to tie it together it's almost like little stitches it's always nice to frame it in right we'll come around so I am so happy um, that any of you and all of you have joined me today or any day that you watch this Thank you again to those who have waited patiently for me to come back with a new video. And I truly plan on um, doing more videos. And uh, keep me in your thoughts and prayers as I go through my own issues. And, and uh, pray for me to keep my creativity going so that I can keep sharing with uh, all of you out there. I thank you because God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You don't know what God's plans are for you. So you just got to ride with it. Again, remember, it's just paint. You know what? God is good. And thank you all for joining me. Until next time, take care.